So there's a lot happening here. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Mandy watching Small Entertainment, and today we are talking about the Seattle Kraken's book talk drama situation thing. Some of you have commented that sometimes when I talk about things, I don't give enough preamble to the different players and what's going on. I don't give you enough background before jumping into like what the actual issue is. So to avoid that this time, we're going to talk about quite a lot. I did go back and forth actually about whether or not to talk about this because it's been playing out pretty much entirely on TikTok and Instagram. It seems like most of the players have like said their piece and are moving on. But I think this is an important discussion to be had about uh, fandom, fandom of real life people and uh, discussions around uh, the revoking of consent. So I'm choosing to still talk about this, even though this is gonna come out after all of this has been hashed out and probably done by that point. Yeah, no, um, I was so wrong. Not only has it not died down, um, it made it to mainstream. Uh, it got discussed on ESPN, The Rolling Stone. It made it to Twitter. It's being discussed ad nauseum now. It's only gotten bigger <laughs> since I filmed this. So there's gonna be a lot of edits to this video. <laughs> Major players of this. First is Kim. Kara Lewis, uh, she is the TikToker at the center of this. Capital B, capital O, capital A, capital F, both. Both? Both. And then you have the Seattle Krakens. Seattle Krakens are a hockey team in Seattle, shocker. They became an unofficial team for book talk, specifically hockey romance book talk. Now, the same way that you may go into a Barnes and Noble and see this book talk table and be like, I have never seen this book promoted on book talk. What are you talking about? There are different channels of book talk, all right? So that's where you'll see a bunch of people being like, I didn't know we had a queen. More than anything, Kiera was a book talker that became popular on hockey romance book talk specifically, and specifically with the Seattle Krakens, okay? For a real life hockey team and not just a fictional hockey team. She came on book talk when she discovered her love of reading and specifically hockey romances. And I think at some point someone recommended that she actually watch a real hockey game because that's how I found her. That's when she first first pulled up on my For You page was I remember seeing a video of her uh, being all bubbly and excited and cheering and sharing her excitement watching a hockey game and how involved she was in it while she was drinking wine, I think, um, is how I originally found Kiara. But that's where she really took off, okay, was her getting super excited about the Seattle Kraken games and things like that. Now, I believe that they commented on that initial video from hers, and that's what led furthering to the partnership because basically even before Kiara came on the scene, the Seattle Krakens had basically become like an unofficial team for hockey romance book talk. And I'm going to keep making that distinction because I think that the rest of book talk, if they see this video, I don't know if you guys watch me or not, will get very upset that I am once again looping them all in because that's basically what's happened in this conversation is everyone is looping book talk into one big book talk, basically, when there are different channels in this. And this is mainly from the hockey romance side of book talk. So I'm going to make that distinction because that is who we are talking about. Even prior to Kiera and her audience getting involved, the Seattle Krakens were doing fine. They were selling out games. They they have a very dedicated fan base. They have a very excitable fan base. Let's not take that away from them because this group of people is upset. I can't remember exactly if they had leaned into it before or after Kiera's involvement, but at some point they really started leaning into the fact that they were book talk official team. And I'm talking about like making edits, like this one's for book talk, having them carry uh, certain books that were popular for book talk, like Icebreaker was a very popular book for uh, the hockey romance book talk. Also, I should note that a lot of the hockey romances in particular that are popular are um, spicy books, smut, erotica. It's baked into the genre. Uh, don't let the cutesy covers fool you. They be fun. Okay. <laughs> It's not uncommon, I've talked about this before, that there are quite a few real people, whether they are real TikTokers, real celebrities, what have you, who get fan casted as characters within book talk. This can usually lead to um, a lot of followers, a lot of influx of support. And this can also lead to a lot of harassment and a lot of vulgar words being thrown at them and things like that. And some people are more comfortable with this than others. And that is not wrong for some people to not be comfortable with it. For example, real people have the right to be uncomfortable when you've decided to place things that involve a fictional character onto them. They have every right to be uncomfortable with that. Really leaned into uh, peeling them and the fact that they were like the team for book talk. And we see this as well with a bunch of other teams. There's quite a few other teams that were like, oh, well, this is working out for them. They're getting a lot of like free promotion from 
these hockey romance book talk girlies and a lot of more fan edits were being made of them and things like that within TikTok. Now, just because this was happening does not mean that the traditional style of hockey fans and all of that, that those did not exist just because this was happening on hockey romance book talk and that they were basically finding a whole new fan base within hockey romance book talk. That does not mean that their initial fan base went away and that they weren't already doing this, but this was a new element for them to have a digital fan base in TikTok and they clearly saw a value in that and they leaned into that. At one point as well, Kiera got invited to a game. The Seattle Krakens invited her to a game and to point out again that they were leaning into the whole book talk situation, they gifted her a jersey that straight up said book talk on it. And she po she had a sign that said, you know, book talk sent me, crack my back, things like that. Now I'm not sure if Kiera herself came up with the crack my back or if that was something that was within the fandom for the Seattle Krakens, I'm not certain. Edit dear viewer, Kiera is saying that she came up with crack my back because it's a play on the phrase break my back, which is popular on book talk. Okay, I'm a California girly and a Vegas girly. That's, those are my teams. Okay, the Golden Knights and the LA Kings. Those are my teams. I've only recently started looking into your guys' games because you guys are good, actually. <laughs> Very impressive. Even in this comment, in this video from uh, two months ago, Princess of Book Talk, our Book Talk Queen, all of that. So she has been titled this, the Book Talk Queen. That was the one that I saw other people on Book Talk having the most issue with. She was like, well, since when did we have a monarchy? Like, what's going on? Now, Kiera was a very pretty vocal, I would say, about quite a few of the players on the Seattle Kraken. She would repeatedly say, like, you guys, this whole roster is super hot. I'm not putting no scrubs. I ain't putting no garbage. I'm gonna put the baddest heifers on the floor. But one of them was Wenberg, Alex Wenberg. So basically one of the games that Kiera had been invited to, uh, where they gave her the book talk jersey and all of that. Baby, it's warm up time, let's go! Ah! They doing it! They doing it! Baby, my kitty not used to being around this many fine bands. She was sitting rinkside yelling, and uh, in one of the clips, it's Wenberg during stretches, during warmies. And in her comment section, people are like, Kira, they can hear you. And she's like, oh my God, I didn't know they could hear me. Bitch, when you at the zoo, don't the glass co cover the damn sound. Bitch, when I tell you, I'm so embarrassed, especially, uh, honestly, no, if done hurt me, baby, your sister meant every word. I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it and own it with my chest. Yeah, after seeing this clip so many times, I really am not a fan of the correlation between animals behind glass in a zoo and uh, human beings on the ice. I don't know, I don't like that. So Felicia Wenberg is the other, I would say main person that has been discussed here. And I would say the person that's being targeted the most. The Seattle Krakens are just kind of like, not our circus, not our monkeys, even though it literally is their circus, but that's just me. And Felicia basically made a video and I wanna thank uh, a TikToker for this breakdown uh, because she got the story posts that were posted by Felicia have since disappeared, obviously after 24 hours. So I want to thank Exclusive Palm Beach Living. She did a very good breakdown of everything going on and also got these screenshots. So I wanna plug her as well. The Kraken PR team thought it was a great idea to jump in the whole PR stunt and like join Book Talk Horses. One of the hockey player's wife posted these on her IG stories. Everything escalated pretty quickly from there. So Felicia posted, so I've joked before and called my husband Book Talks Wink Bank and honestly did not mind. I always thought Alex was the most beautiful person in the world and that it just seems the world finally caught up to it. The reason I struggled to navigate this is while I'm all for female empowerment and especially around sex, there have been videos and comments made that has crossed the line of what it means to fancy someone and when it actually sounds pretty predatory and exploiting. For someone who wrote my final dissertation on sexual consent and what's crossing a line, this has been especially interesting because there seemed to be a different threshold of what is considered okay only because the victims of people's desires are male hockey players. I feel that women who have experienced catcalling, getting involuntarily filmed in exposed situations like a groin stretch at their job, should hold ourselves to a higher standard. You can be sex positive without exploiting others. I believe this is her sharing a screenshot of a reel of her husband stretching. Again, I I genuinely don't care about the comments about my husband's looks. He is so beautiful, right? I don't like, but at least I understand that people try to shoot their shot and DM him, even if I myself would not go for someone who is in a relationship. 
This is at least somewhat of a normal behavior when fancying someone. What doesn't sit with me is when your desires come with sexual harassment, inappropriate comments, and the fact that with the internet, we can normalize behavior that would never be okay if flipped the genders around to a guy doing this to a female athlete. When we were expecting our son, I knew how important it was to raise him to treat people and especially women with respect if he were to identify as straight. And I would feel like a hypocrite if I didn't say anything about behavior that I would never be okay with if we raised a girl. I mean, no hate to the book talk community, just a little request for some people to think twice about their comments, videos, or chanting crack my back at humans with feelings. That was the post that happened. And apparently Kiera uh, saw this or someone tagged her in it is my assumption. And she replied, let's go into me being the adult and messaging Felicia Winberg yesterday when I saw her make a story about me and book talk. I literally said, hey, this is a screenshot from my video. I never meant any harm. I've never messaged him or anyone because on her story, she was like, well, people are DMing. And so I broke it down for her because she also said she wasn't a fan of crack my back. I said, break my back was just a saying on TikTok. So naturally crack was said, but I am just, I am so sorry and will delete any and all videos you want. I was so serious. I will literally delete whatever videos you fucking wanted, but you needed to respond. I said, I'm confused on what's going on because this video was posted on 426. And then I continue saying all this, just read. I'm confused on what's going on. I haven't made Kraken videos since the playoffs. I even stopped making videos about him when I found out he was married. I am truly so sorry. I never DM'd or even followed your husband, but now it seems that I'm the new target since my name is in your story. There was someone else mentioned or a screen grab from another person's account in um, Felicia's story, but Kiera's name was left in her comment, basically, or the screen grab from her story. But what I also didn't like is her first post was about this, how she said she used to call her husband book talks uh panty drop or book talk wonk or whatever and now she's having a change of heart but what i found so slick was why did you cover up this person's name but when it came to the post about me the next post you literally kept my name on there trying to send whoever you and your little goons to come after me and yeah this was her, her whole slick thing but my issue of the matter is for you i always say people want to ride book talk hotel for the clout and then switch up you were just calling your husband what Book talk what? First and foremost, Felicia has every right to decide that she's no longer comfortable with people messaging her husband, objectifying her husband and things like that. She has every right to say that for whatever reason. It could be something as simple as like the season starts up in a little over a month, a month or two now. And she's worried about the fact that the comments haven't stopped since the playoffs and she's worried about them starting back up again and getting worse once the season starts. It could be a variety of things. It could be that, you know, her husband said, hey, I don't like this. Like, look at the messages I'm getting or things like that. Who knows? OK, I don't think speculating on the state of their marriage or his fidelity to her is the right move, in my opinion, from anyone. Personally, I also think that he is a, a professional athlete and I don't know what the Seattle Kraken's, you know, statements are on public statements from their players and things like that. I don't know. Maybe he's not allowed to comment about things like this because at the end of the day, as far as he knows, she is technically done work here as with the Seattle Kraken's with going to their game and posting about them and things like that. That could be sponsorship. There could be a deal in there. He maybe doesn't want to go after someone that's been involved with the social media team. I don't know. Who knows? As far as I'm aware, his wife is not beholden to those potential same rules for like decorum within the team. Who knows what the deal is, okay, as far as that goes. He has since made a statement, but we will get there. Alicia has every right to revoke consent for, actually, I was fine with it originally. No, I'm not. Full disclosure, I cut out a section here because originally I did think that Felicia should have reached out to Kiara and these other posters directly. However, I changed my mind on that. She was trying to address the overall problem, not these direct people. So I do change my mind on her reaching out to Kiara privately. Now, apparently at some point in this, the Seattle Krakens clearly decided that it was best to side with Felicia and Alex and they unfollowed Kara and also basically did a full scrub of a lot of their TikToks. Um, I don't know about their other social media platforms. I'm just familiar with their TikToks, okay? Basically scrubbed a lot of the content that was leaning into book talk specifically and some of their own edits where it's like, this one's for book talk and things like that. Between the Krakens and Felicia, Felicia handled it better because the Krakens just going and just wiping everything versus being like, hey, we were cool with it or even reaching out to Kiera directly when they've clearly invited her to a game and things like that um, and been like, hey, just letting you know, 
we've talked with the team and things like that. Like what, whatever, whatever was said, whatever needed to be said, I don't know. But something other than just like, we're gonna pretend we never involved you in our team whatsoever, I think is a cowardly move, frankly. And before any Seattle Kraken fan come at me, like they never needed to involve her in the first place, we don't need her. I know, okay, but they did. Now, I am also saying this because I do think that there may have been more involved in this partnership than just her being invited to a game, but I don't know for certain this is alleged. Basically, Kiara's rate sheet leaked, someone found it, and a rate sheet is something that a lot of content creators and influencers have. I have one, my management deals with it, I do not touch it myself, but apparently Kiara was basically selling promotion of books and things like that. This is now proven by a lot of the videos on her platform now featuring the paid partnership label, which was not previously on there, which is an FTC guideline violation. If she was promoting these books and being paid to promote these books and she was not disclosing that, that is an FTC guidelines violation. I do not know if the Seattle Krakens were involved in any form of this. Obviously they are not selling books and things like that. Not outside the realm of possibility that they were like, hey, we'll pay for your flight and things like that to come do the game or whatever. I don't know. However, even if they were in some form of a deal previously with Kiara, it does not mean they need to extend that deal or continue to you know, work with her or whatever. But at the very least, I do think that good form from the Seattle Kraken's social teams, the team itself, would be them saying publicly on social where all this is happening, that we stand with our players, we want them to be comfortable, things like that. Here's Kiara's note statement from yesterday. On Thursday, Alex Wenberg's wife, Felicia Wenberg, made posts not only attacking book talk, but me as a person. She slandered my name by calling me a sexual harasser in reference to a saying that it was clearly played off of the Seattle crack and name Crack My Back. Not only did she miss the joke of it being a spinoff, the break my back, but she purposefully included my name on her Instagram story, which led to me receiving hate from her following. As Alex received more popularity, the wife enjoyed the clout and was seen appreciating book talks humor by calling her husband, Mr. Panty Droppa and a uh, book talk wank bag. But suddenly out of left field, she decided to use a screenshot of a video I posted four months ago to call me clearly my clearly made joke, sexual harassment. Once I saw her post, I immediately DM'd her apologizing and offered a solution to me deleting any and all videos that mentioned Alex Winberg. No response. Yesterday, I get home to find out the Seattle Kraken had unfollowed me and deleted all of their thirst trap videos, which left me confused and upset. The Seattle Kraken not only took interest in my videos from the beginning that mentioned Alex Winberg, but even encouraged me to keep posting as well as them beginning to post their own thirst traps of Winberg. It even got to a point where people were calling it an Alex Winberg fan page as well as them now removed, changing their bio to mostly book talk. I want to also mention my Seattle Kraken reactions and blog led to them flying me to their playoff games and gifting me a book talk jersey. This event led to them gaining over 60,000 followers. Instead of messaging me and explaining what was going on, the Kraken social media team just covered their tracks by deleting all videos relating to book talk and Winberg. So I then went to TikTok to defend myself and explain my side of the story and to see videos of people calling me a sexual harasser when these reaction videos aren't new. I've made them about several stars and athletes whose wives and mothers have even sent them my videos and reposted it due to them understanding the humor. Most people I react to I don't follow, don't keep up with their lives, and damn sure never thought to DM them. Again, if my video from April was an issue, I would have felt better. Felicia Winberg would have just have just DM'd me, and of course, I would have immediately taken it down. No questions asked, and it's also unfair to call me out on a post when there are hundreds of maybe even thousands of videos on TikTok about him. Again, Felicia has every right to revoke that I am no longer comfortable with this. She has every right to say that. I'm also not fully understanding Kiera's take about the humor of it all. Some people don't find it funny for you to say you want them to, you know, fill all three of your holes and things like that. You know, I don't, I don't think that that's wrong or that they don't get the joke or that they just don't understand humor because they don't find that funny because they think it crossed a line. Kara, if you see this, I think a good way that should have handled this maybe is just saying like, hey guys, I have been made aware that uh, Felicia Wenberg, wife of Alex Wenberg of the Seattle Krakens is no longer comfortable with me talking about her husband in relation to book talk, in relation to anything sexual whatsoever. And so I want to make it very clear that I will 
I understand, I'm taking that in and I apologize. Or like, I did not know this was a problem or I understand that it's now a problem, things like that. I don't know, something like that. That's kind of all you needed to do. Also, this might sound like a stupid point, but at the time of recording this, I absolutely thought she was like 21, 22. And that does not, uh, you know, negate any of this, but she's 27 years old. Kira, you know better. I'm sorry. Like, I, 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 no, you know better. I don't think saying that her audience came after me is um, a good move considering uh, Felicia still has 13,000 on Instagram and you have 1.1 million on TikTok. Now, I know we talk a lot about TikTok numbers being overinflated. So 1.1 million is probably closer to 400,000, 300,000 ish, I would say. But those are still just not comparable numbers. You may have gotten messages from her viewers and fans and followers or what have you, which obviously doesn't feel good. But then I think a simple like, hey, I see your messages. I get her message loud and clear or whatever. You know, I think that that would have been enough. And then saying, um, I have now seen that the Seattle Krakens have unfollowed me. I am hurt by this, whatever. You have every right to be hurt by them unfollowing you in my opinion, but they also have the right to say that this is no longer comfortable or that our players are no longer comfortable with us leaning into this. Their wives are not comfortable with it, what have you. I, I think that that's okay for them to do. I don't like the, erasing everything and then pretending it didn't happen. I don't like that at all from the Seattle Krakens, but they also have the right to revoke consent for how their players are discussed. Again, these are real people. They are technically employees of the Seattle Krakens, okay? Even though they're players, they're on contract, they're employees. Basically a company is allowed to say like, hey, we're not cool with how you speak about our employees. Kiara made several videos and um, in doing this, the, again, I don't even wanna loop them all into the hockey side, of book talk because at, at the end of the day, book talk is not immune from a mob mentality. We see this from time and time again when an author decides to go after, let's say, a negative review on Goodreads that maybe brought their star rating down or something, and they decide to go after this reviewer for whatever reason. And uh, then book talk goes after that author via Goodreads and tanks their rating. And you don't have to think that that's a good thing that that happens, but it's a thing that happens. It's a reality of book talk. Power of book talk is not always used for good. Sometimes you can get a new author who has been working on a book for 20 years, a number one ranking on Amazon. And then other times you can tank someone's career. You know, like there is a market power to book talk. And unfortunately in this instance, it led to people harassing Felicia on her social media page, including photos of her with her son. Someone's allowed to revoke consent. That does not mean that they can, they, they deserve to be targeted because they said, hey, I was cool with this and now I'm not. That is not, that. Uh, how does that justify being targeted by book talk whatsoever? Like that, that's, uh, ri it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. She's removed a lot of the comments from her post from what I can see, which I, I think is good. A Kiara has posted this video where she is saying that she's just gonna get back to what she was doing before. Forget the Seattle Krakens, forget Wenberg, forget his wife. I'm just gonna get back to doing this. And then the next literally immediately posted a, a book haul. So Kiara's fine. Yesterday after, I'm assuming this is around the same time that Kiara posted her text post video and all of that, but Alex Winberg did make a post on his Instagram story. He said, over the last couple of days, me and especially my wife have been getting lots of criticism about speaking up on sexually harassment on TikTok. As someone who's been media trained my whole career, I've been taught to buy my tongue and to leave it instead of making a statement, but it has gone too far for me to stay quiet when people post vile comments on my wife's Instagram and on photos of our child. The reason my wife said something and not me is simply she does it better and more bravely than me. I'm all for the book talk community to write books and fiction about hockey, but the aggressive language about real life players is too much. It has turned into daily and weekly comments on our personal social media. This is not something we support or want our child to grow up with. All we ask for is a little respect and common sense regarding moving forward. We can all take a joke and funny comments about when it, but when it turns into personal and into something bigger that affects our family, we need to tell you that we have had enough, enough of sexual harassment and harassment of our character and our relationship. Thank you for understanding. And then Felicia posted as well. I really wanted my post to be one statement and be taken for what it was, a request for accountability, respect boundaries, and for people to educate themselves on sexual harassment, consent, and the double standard I see online. I am, however, sorry that the creator in the video took this as a direct attack on her. It was never my intention, but I chose the screenshot to show how her videos got comments on it with 300 likes, 300 plus likes. I left the girl's name in it too. 
where 300 plus people find a joke funny when she requests Alex and his teammates to do all three of her holes. This is the problem I have. The toxic culture and problematic following and harassment behavior that is perfectly exemplified in my Insta comments right now. I did not include the name of the author in my first post because that girl is writing a spicy book with my husband as her inspiration. And I did not want to promote that in any way. And her sharing the groin stretch video and tagging Alex is crossing the line. I understand the people are confused by the timing of my statement. But while the creator is hung up on it being four months since she posted the video, she and her following seem to be unable to grasp that the video continued to show up in our lives on a daily basis. We got sent this video and other videos of Alex on a weekly, if not daily basis. Every game I've been to and talked to fans, I get in my head about not knowing if these are genuine hockey fans or people who and comment that they masturbate with his jersey on. Everyone we meet talks to us about it, so it makes it extremely hard to continue to hope this would all calm down. While I really wanna believe a lot of it, is innocent comments. I think the behavior I've seen since my post has proven my original point. I'll continue to post pictures with my incredible husband and call him all the weird, cringy, inside joke nicknames I want because he is my husband and I know he's consent. He's consent to my wording, my affection, and posts. If we say we don't appreciate your wording or post, surely that should be enough. I don't mind the videos that are out there to still be up as the damage is already done and those who are at fault should know they are at fault after my first statement. That is why I did not interact with the creator because my issue was never with her, but with the toxic collective. With that said, I don't want people to go after her. However, if you post videos that make people uncomfortable, maybe the videos are the issues and not the people that are made uncomfortable by them. All I did was give context to a situation where we had enough and ask people to keep their desires and comments in a private conversation versus online where we and other hockey families can see it. Lastly, there has always been a stigma of speaking up in the hockey world which is why players are afraid to speak up about injustices and their families, yet worried that taking a stand would jeopardize their career. With the backlash I received, I can understand why, but I hope this is the start of a conversation that was long overdue in hockey culture. Thank you for those who understand my heart and sorry to those who write things about this with so much hate in yours. That was a lot. So like I said, I want to talk about this because of revoking consent and things like that. And I've talked about this here and there as well with fan fiction about real people and talking about this specifically with YouTubers. YouTubers are real people. We talk about this with the parasocial dynamic and things like that. And I don't know exactly how the parasocial dynamic can maybe fall into this when you are talking about, say, sports athletes, sports athletes, athletes, <laughs> and putting fiction onto them with like relating them to a character in a book that originally was not based on them whatsoever. You know, I don't know where that falls into with the parasocial dynamic. I'm assuming there's something there, but I'm not familiar with it in that context. So I don't know for certain. Now I know some people are going to be like, well, he's a public figure. He's going to get this regardless of if it's Kier or someone else. Yes. The same reason I just went on my friends, uh, Gabby and Sabrina's show, Unhinged DMs, and I shared some of the unhinged DMs that I've gotten from some of you as a woman on the internet, okay? That's something that is just a part of my life. It's probably a part of Alex's life as well. Obviously, he is a professional hockey player. I'm a mid-sized YouTuber. These are not in the same ballpark, and I don't want anyone to think that I'm putting us in the same ballpark. But my point is, is that we are more... Uh, online, we have a wider audience than say someone at a grocery store. You know what I'm saying? And when you're viewed by more people and perceived by more people, you have the possibility of more people being attracted to you, fantasizing about you, commenting on your appearance, things like that. Everyone has their different tolerances for what they are and are not comfortable with. He is a hockey player. That is his job. His job is public facing. He is an athlete, all of that, okay? His job is not putting up with sexual harassment. That is not his job, okay? You can be attracted to him, even he, though he has a wife and things like that. But when it goes to the point of being yelling, crack my back and things like that at games or what have you with any player, with any team, whether it's break my back, whatever, anything, they are allowed to have a problem with it and be uncomfortable with it. The same way that I've talked about, there's a lot of people who are uncomfortable with having fan fiction written about them, real people, okay? Harry Styles has talked about this. Um, a lot of YouTubers have talked about this where they're very uncomfortable when they see fan fiction about themselves with them, like in a relationship with their friends. Now I am someone who I 
think that fan fiction is a part of fandom and I personally am fine with it with fan fiction being written about me but I also draw the line of do not include my actual real friends in there because they are not comfortable with it everyone has their own boundaries and sometimes people are not always good about sharing their boundaries or they are unable to share their boundaries like in the instance of Alex talking about media training sometimes the best response is to say nothing for a lot of people that's how they are trained to respond to things like that so when someone does say something that should should be an indicator that it's gotten to a point where they are severely uncomfortable. I'm going to end this here, but I wanna make it abundantly clear again, public figures are public figures and them being public facing is a part of their job, but they do not have to put up with your harassment of them if it does not make them comfortable or if, let's not use the word harassment maybe, um, just sexual comments being made about them. They don't have to be comfortable with that, okay? They can say the boundary. It's one thing for someone to be in my DMs, but if someone comes up to me in person and says that they want to split me in two, I have every right to say, go fuck yourself or punch them in the face. I will probably go to jail for assault, but um, I will go out with a bang. At the end of the day, the only person who knows the lines for an individual is that individual themselves. And once they make that boundary known, all you can really do is respect that boundary. And if you crossed it previously, you can apologize. I wanted to talk about this because I wanna make it abundantly clear because I feel like there's been quite a few instances, especially not just in with book talks involvement and things like that, hockey romance book talks, sorry, don't get mad at me, hockey romance book talks involvement with this, but also with other forms of media and real people and fandom around real people, people being uncomfortable when the fandom takes a step too far, whether that boundary was set prior or not, okay? And so I wanted to talk about how this is an instance of someone straight up saying, I'm not comfortable with this anymore. I'm walking it back. All you can do in that instance is, I'm sorry, I will not cross this boundary again. That is all. Same goes with social media people actors, musicians. We see this now. This is a whole different argument. I've, I've previously talked about how concert crowds have gotten insane. And then since then, you guys have just think it's funny now to throw things at people. What? Revoking of consent is valid is my whole point. If a porn star comes to you tomorrow and says, I don't like that you've made uh, edits of me or things like that, they're allowed to do that. Anyways, that's going to be it. Um, are you at all on Hockey Romance Book Talk? Are you on Book Tech at all? Are you a fan of the Seattle Krakens? Are you a fan of hockey? And you're just like, what is going on? Swell, what's happening? Um, let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, the Swell Shannon's Podcast. Reminder that the Swell Entertainment is now available on Spotify. This episode will be available tomorrow. Reminder, I have merch. There was a part of my brain that said, crack my back. I'm not gonna do it. I won't do it, I promise. I'm not. <laughs> I'm sorry, I won't, I'm sorry. There's a stupid little, you know, the intrusive thought that decided to come out of my mouth. Okay, shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for being on Patreon. You can also explore my Patreon, leave us down below. Like on my notes, social media, that'll be up here. And that's gonna be have a lovely day. Goodbye. Consent can be revoked at any time, whether you are a public figure or not regardless of context. All right, all right, goodbye. Thank you, Amy, Andrew, Allen, Awful, Aslan, BJ, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Crispy, Crispy, Crash, Shannon, Corey, Daniela, Dirty One, Dawn, Donnie, Elliot, Evan, Eric, Eyal, Ghostly, Hopeless, Homer, Jay, Incognito, Jasmine, Joe, John M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Lauren, Lamb, Leah, Lex, Louisa, Luis, May West, Madeline, Matt, Matthew S, Mimor, Medic, Michael, Michael J, Michael T, Micah, Nathan, Pat, Pen, Pink, Philip, Richard, Rob, Rosie, Red, Robert, Ross, Ryan, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Tim Timothy, Heavenly, Plastic, Tyler, Tenzin, Tom, Thomas, Querty, Victor, Randy, Winter, Will, Wendy, William, Zendry, Zwing.